Hey everyone, let's start the class 12 portion with the quick and solid revision of Python programming. So here is the plan. First we will quickly revise different types of tokens. Then we will move on to the conditional statements. How to use if elif to control the flow of the program. And finally we will revise looping statements like for and while loops that helps us to repeat task efficiently. So let's begin with the tokens. Here is a list of tokens in python. The first is keyword. The second one is identifiers. Here is the third one that is literals. The fourth is operators and fifth one is nothing but punctuators. Out of this identifier and operator is very important. Here is the first token that is keyword. Hope you know what is token. Token is the smallest unit of the program with the help of which we write the programming statements. Here is the list of the keywords. All the keywords we will be writing in a lower case letters except true, false and none. Look at the first letter. It is capital. The second token is nothing but identifiers. Identifiers means it's a name given to the different parts of the program. Identifiers is used to give identity just like our name which gives identity to us. Whenever we give name, we follow general common sense. In the same way, we will follow here certain rules. Variable name should not be keyword. It must contain only letters, numbers and only the special symbol underscore is allowed. And the variable name should not begin with the number. We know that Python is a case sensitive language. So uppercase and lowercase letters are different. Make sure you are clear with this concept because you may get question where you need to identify valid or invalid identifier. Here comes the third token that is nothing but literals. Literals are constant. As we have different data types in Python, we will have different types of constants too. The next token which we are going to discuss that is nothing but operators. It is very important. Operators are of two types. Actually, these are of three types. There is one more ternary operator also. The first type is unary. It means it operate on the single operand. The second one is binary operator. It operates on two operands. And the third type is ternary. It operates on three operands. Look at this diagram. There are total eight different types of binary operators. Then let's go through all the operators one by one. The first is arithmetic operator plus minus and multiplication. It's easy to understand. Division operator gives the quotient, but it gives the answer in the form of float. If you want quotient in the form of integer, you will be using float division operator. Please make a note of it. If any of the operand is float, then you will get answer as float itself. Apart from that, we have modulus operator which gives remainder. And there is one more operator, exponentiation. It is used to calculate power of a number. All right, here are six relational operators. It is used to compare two values. Based on that, you will get true or false. The third operator is identity operator, which will check the address of two variables. If the memory address is same, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. Moving ahead, here is the logical operator. There are three logical operators. Out of that, not is a unary operator, whereas these two operators are binary operators. Logical operators are used to combine two different relational operations. It also returns the answer in the form of true or false. Hope you know the working of OR and AND. Here is one more listed operator that is bitwise but this is not that much important so we will skip it. Moving ahead to the last operator that is membership. It checks the membership of the variable or the constant in the sequence. If it exists, it will return true. If not, it will return false. In the basics of all the programming language, this is one of the important topic that is operator precedence. It decides in which order operators get evaluated. And in board exam, we surely get one question in which we need to evaluate an expression based on the precedence of operator. Here in the table, we have arranged the operators based on highest to lowest precedence. So look at the table. The highest precedence is having parentheses. So let's write P for it. The second precedence is given to the exponentiation operator. So let's write E for that. For us, these operators are not that much important. So let's skip it. Moving ahead to the next category. These are some of the arithmetic operators which has the next priority. 
for that we will be writing a in that also plus and minus has the lower priority compared to multiplication division and the modulus operator all right next priority is given to relational operators and at last we have categories of logical operators so to keep the precedence of the operators in mind remember the word perl let's discuss one more important point in case of logical operators out of these three logical operators the highest priority is given to not operator then and and then or so if you have any expression consisting of logical operators keep this word also in mind n a o all right we understood this concept now there is one more catch what if we have one expression with all the operators from the same level what i meant to say let's take one example like x plus y minus z there are two operators of same category then which one will get evaluated first in that case we follow the rule of associativity what it says the operators will execute from left to right those who have same level of precedence here plus and minus have the same precedence then x plus y will get evaluated first all the operators follow this associativity that is left to right except exponentiation it operates from right to left let me explain this with one simple example here is one expression of having only exponentiation operator now tell me what will be the output of this exponentiation operator operates from right to left so first 2 to the power 1 will get calculated it means we will get 2 then 2 to the power 2 will get calculated it means the result will be 4 hope all your doubts related to operators got cleared we will continue our discussion with the types of statements the first is empty statement pass is a empty statement in python according to the syntax of the python we must write some code but at this moment i don't have any code to write in that case we can write the pass statement the second type is the simple statement we can also call it as a single statement like print input and a is equals to 10 also is an example of simple statement moving ahead to the third one that is compound statement it's a unit or we can say it's a group of statements like conditional statements and looping statements in the revision to raw python we have reached to one important topic that is conditional statement it is used to check the condition and based on the result of the condition some statements will execute and some will not here is the first form of the if that is simple if we write if keyword followed by condition if condition evaluates true true these statements will get executed it means with the simple if we can write the true part look at the example here is a condition for even number if the number is completely divisible by 2 it means its remainder is zero that means the number is even but what if i want to write the else part too in that case you will be using if else here this part is exactly same this is nothing but true part for false part we will be writing else and here is a block of statement which will get executed when the condition is false the previous example we have modified with the else part if this condition satisfies the number will be even otherwise the number will be odd moving ahead to the third form it is if elif why we use this if we have more condition in that case we cannot use if else because with if else we can check only one condition in that case we will be using if elif so here is the first condition if first condition gets evaluated to true we will come to this part otherwise in case of false we are checking one more condition if condition 2 gets evaluated to true we will come to this true part again if it gets evaluated to false we are checking one more condition in the same way we will be continuing this finally this will be the else part when all the condition will get evaluated to false the else part will get executed here is a simple example to understand this with this code we are calculating the grade or the result based on the percentage if percentage is greater than 85 then we will get distinction if not we will check percentage is greater than 60 if it is greater than 60 then you will get first class in the same way we will be getting the other grades we are finally at the last form of if it is called as nested if when we include one if inside another if then it is called as nested if 
when we use this form of if after checking the first condition and depending on the result of that condition we need to check the second condition then we use this type of form we can form this nesting inside the if part inside the elif part or inside the else part too or if you want you can include in all three parts that's why there are four different forms of nested if for this let me give you one real life example if you need to cast your vote the first condition is indian if you are indian then only we are going to check your age first we will check your nationality if it satisfies then only we will ask your age if both the conditions satisfy then only you are eligible candidate to cast the vote here is the most important concept of all the programming languages that is nothing but looping in python there are two loops out of these two loops we generally use for loop because it is easy to write and while loop is used for creating infinite loop in case of menu driven program let's check out the syntax of for we can use for in two different ways using in or not in membership operator and using range function in the for loop then look at the syntax for the first form for variable name in sequence here the usage of membership operator is that it will iterate over all the elements of the sequence look at this example we have written the code for i in the list so i will be taking each and every value of the list if we print it we are getting all the values in the same way here we are iterating over string when we iterate over the string we know we get the individual character of the string now let's check out how we use range function hope you are clear with the range function in case of range function we write start we write end and we write step start is optional even step is optional if you don't mention starting it will be zero if you don't mention step it will be one what about this parameter stop we must mention this but this is exclusive what is the use of range function it generates a sequence of numbers all right let's check out the syntax for variable in range function with for loop we create one block inside that we write the statements which we need to repeat look at this simple example for i in range 1 to 6 this is the starting limit and here is the ending limit ending limit is exclusive it means we need to consider one less than the mentioned limit it means what the loop will execute from 1 to 5 we are printing it look at the output we are getting the numbers from 1 to 5 that was for loop make sure you are clear with the for loop and the range function the second loop is while loop generally we don't use this because we have to write the steps in a different lines it is used to create infinite loop like this while true true means always it will be true whatever statements you will write here it will execute infinitely that you need to break so we take the choice from the user and depending on the choice we break from the loop Now what's this break it's a jump statement all right then now let's try to understand the jump statements there are two jump statements break and continue why we need jump statements to come out of the loop in between break statement will terminate as soon as it encounters generally it is written with the if condition when the condition satisfies then we have to come out of the loop as soon as the break encounters the control will come out of the loop Look at this simple example we are iterating over the list with five numbers we are printing it but when the value of x will be 3 we are writing break it means it will come out of the loop and the next statement will get printed so we are getting the output of 1 2 and 3 now the value of x is 3 because of break statement the loop got terminated so the rest of the two values did not get printed then what is the use of continue statement Continue statement continues the loop from the next iteration but in that process it skips the rest of the statements of the loop for that particular iteration what it means look at the code this is the same example but here we are using continue statement initially the value of x will be 1 it is getting printed in the same way number 2 got displayed but when the value of x will become 3 we have written continue what this continue statement will do it will skip the rest of the statement rest of the statement means we have print x so this statement will not execute it means 3 will not get printed 
and the iteration of the loop will continue from the next value the next value is 4 after that we have 5 and out of the loop we have end of program hope you understood the execution of the code this is the new concept in python that we have else part for the loop also this else part will execute when the loop terminates normally. If you will use break, then this else part will not execute. Look at the example. Here we are printing numbers from 1 to 4 according to the range function. This loop is getting terminated normally. That's why else part got executed and we got this message end of loop. If we would have here break statement with some condition, in that case this part will not execute. Here is one more important concept related to loop that is nesting of loop. When we place one if inside another if, it is called as nested if. In the same way, when we place one loop inside another loop, it is called as nested loop. How it get executed? For every value of outer variable, inner loop will get executed for all its possible values. Here the outer loop will execute from 0 to 3 and inner loop will execute from 0 to 2. It means in total it will execute for 3 times and the inner loop will execute total 2 times. It means in a whole this loop will execute for 6 times. Look at the dry run of this loop. Initially the value of i will be 1. We will enter inside the loop. Now the possible values for j is 1 and 2 maintaining this outer loop value constant. After that again the value of i will get updated. It will be 2. What are the possible values of j? 1 and 2. Again we got these j values maintaining the i values as constant. Now we will get the last value of i. It is nothing but 3 and the possible values for j is same 1 and 2. i will be constant again. So look at this table. It executed total 6 times. This is how the nested loop gets executed. Hope you understood this concept. And that's the wrap for today's video. In the next video, we will be discussing questions based on Python fundamental. So don't miss it. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you are notified when it drops. Until then, keep practicing, stay curious. I will see you in the next video.